AI gets people arrested, how will AI handle cyber warfare, and what's the deal with women in AI. You're watching the AI report, helping you stay relevant in the age of AI. Once again, we have a lot of great stuff to cover today. Let's get into it. Police in India arrest 87 suspected cheats in government recruitment exams. Ah, cheating. Reminds me of college. They use facial recognition to identify people taking tests in the name of others. Guys, a piece of advice from someone who's been in the trenches. Rule number one of cheating, don't get caught. Seriously, this is good. In most countries, including mine, and judging by the news, India as well, government employees, well, let's just say they're not the most motivated, hardworking, competent people. And we want the best possible candidates in those jobs to prevent corruption. So yeah, I would never like snitch or moralize on another cheater, but this is a good use of AI. The European Union draft law for AI called the AI Act may be so strict that it grinds innovation to a halt, say executives from big companies in an open letter. Well, they probably have an incentive to say that, but I also feel like that's Europe's thing actually. They're always hitting the brakes on the riskiest moves and regulate the bejesus out of potential opportunities. They let the US have all the fun basically and if something works out in the US and the Americans find a way to make it work in a safe enough way, only then will Europe jump on the train. This is usually why Europe is like five or more years behind in many technological or entrepreneurial fields. It's actually a good business for many. I've noticed this in the UK most prominently and it's probably the same in other European countries. First you have the dot-com business crush it in the US and a few years later you see a bunch of .co.uk businesses crush it on a smaller scale in the UK. The US eats all the risk associated with breakthrough innovation and often they suffer the costs as a result but also they reap the benefits the most and that's one of the key reasons why they're leaders in tech for decades now. A new AI chip enables faster and more efficient AI programs. The new chip, Photonic, doesn't directly increase compute power, but it improves the bandwidth for information. AI programs need disgusting amounts of data, and transferring the data between the nodes through regular fiber optics results in lots of efficiency losses because of heat dissipation. The new chip addresses that issue, but even more importantly, this is one of those technologies that may spill over from being a cutting-edge specialized technology into mainstream consumer products. Who doesn't want faster internet, right? Video game developer Valve starts to ban games that include AI-generated art. They want game creators to prove they own the rights to all of that content and they have even identified content that is intellectual property of parties other than the creators of the game. It's important to monitor these kinds of developments as the debate on property rights for AI-generated content is probably still in its infancy and bigger events like these may serve as trailblazers for what's to come. As far as I'm aware, the question still hangs in the balance, although we already have several notable instances of bigger entities not being totally on board with the liberal use of AI-generated content. Most notably, the Grammys pretty much outlawing generated music and that's how precedents are made that may become legal frameworks later. Windows 11 previews Copilot, which brings ChatGPT to your OS, but also unlocks a few other futuristic AI use cases. I guess this is the vengeance that Clippy dreamed of. Does anyone remember Clippy or am I just really, really old? Actually, Cortana may be a better reference. Yeah, this is Cortana's vengeance. Besides generating AI content like ChatGPT, Copilot will be able to control and change your settings and you can do things like changing to dark mode, turning on do not disturb mode, taking a screenshot. It may not seem like much on the surface, but this is pretty exciting stuff actually, as it has the potential to change the way we interact with our beloved devices. The mouse and keyboard have been the defining interface of entire generations, but when Copilot gets coupled with the voice commands, and it may even already be, we may finally have Iron Man's Jarvis at our disposal. As you may be able to notice, I'm still rocking the Windows 10 here, but I'll try and get my hands on this thing as soon as I can and see if it's any good. While we're on the subject of Microsoft, they just released a free training on generative AI skills. You can take this course on LinkedIn and even earn a certificate. This is pretty great, honestly. I publicly promised to review this course ASAP, but I recommend you check it out as well in the meanwhile. It's free, you get a certification, and you will probably learn a thing or two. 
A link to it is in the description. Meta published a blog post that goes into depth on how they use AI to serve content to users with the aim to provide more transparency and control for users. Basically, this is nothing new here, really. Essentially, the more engagement a piece of content receives by people that belong to a certain audience, the more that content will be promoted to similar audiences or that exact same audience. Although it's not just the engagement, it's also the content itself that's evaluated. Social media marketers and people know this thing for like ages now, but it's still pretty good to be reminded on the official stance of Meta. The information is organized into 22 cards for every Facebook and Instagram feature, such as the Facebook feed, recommended pages, groups, Instagram posts, stories, reels, etc. If you're working on social media or if you just want more people to see your shirtless pic on Instagram, this is a must read. I'll leave not one, not two, but three links in the description, going from more general to more nerdy. Salesforce reveal new AI tools. Sales GPT and Service GPT will help sales and customer support teams in their workflow. So, the sales AI will help businesses bother their clients in a more personalized way and the customer support AI will help the already disengaged agents to care even less. Good plan. No, seriously, this is an obvious move for Salesforce and a good move. Also, this is the reason why I kind of decided not to pursue some cool little startup idea on bringing AI to sales processes. It's obvious that the big players will integrate AI into their products as well and will essentially push you out. I'm not saying nobody should try and innovate here, but currently I think that building an AI may have a bit of a barrier to entry. I mean, you can still probably build amazing startups, but training your own models or doing any form of significant work may be prohibitively expensive for most bootstrapped operators. In contrast, developing a software as a service business, for example, has been pretty trivial for years now, possibly even decades. Every bored teenager who didn't have a date for the weekend could have started a billion dollar company from their mom's basement. And to drive the previous point further, Typeface, a generative AI content platform for businesses, raises 100 million from Salesforce and Google for a total of 165 million in investment so far, giving it a valuation of $1 billion. I guess we have a new unicorn on the block. Generative AI for enterprise companies. Man, it's so obvious. I wonder how many companies will do this and how many of them will crush it. There's big money to be made here. Still, these guys think they need $165 million to build a great competitive product. And I think they don't even have a working version yet. You can only join the waitlist for now. Who knows? I'm excited for the field and I'm not the type of guy to pretend that money doesn't matter. So obviously my brain is constantly churning on what's the best path to pursue. I just see a ton of opportunity, but the tools, the infrastructure and the expertise required to build a good AI startup may require a lot of investment. Or maybe I'm missing something. If you think I do, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you think. That will probably change though. It usually does. Smaller businesses and teams of founders may not have the best opportunity yet, but individual content creators certainly do, for example. And I expect the tools and opportunities for small development teams to improve soon as well. On the other hand, an even worse example, Inflection, the company behind the ultra-personalizable chatbot Pi, raises $1.3 billion from Microsoft. Pi is actually quite an interesting chatbot because it has this one very cool feature. It tends to ask you questions at the end of its responses, which makes it great for brainstorming and planning and still maining arguments and things like that. So yeah, if you want to make a great chatbot, maybe you need 1.3 billion dollars. Okay, time for some scary stuff. In the age of AI, Cybercram has the potential to be like a billion times worse. AIs can be very effective in hacking and compromising security systems. We already talked about how AI can be used in scams and social engineering attacks in a video before, but it can also be used to probe for weaknesses and public facing interfaces of companies and it will be a killer feature for designing ransomware attacks. I have a feeling that the problem will be the same as the solution here. The only thing that can defend from attacks from AI effectively will be another AI. Fight fire with fire, I guess. In some instances, attackers will be a step ahead of the defenders, but that's just the nature of the game. That's how crime works, and it has always been like this. The criminals use creative and inventive ways to steal or cheat or do harm, and the victims or the police then study those crimes and figure out how to defend against them. And finally, 
Former Bill Gates' wife and stressed out suburb mom Melinda Gates is concerned about the lack of women in AI and what effects that might have. Mm, okay, Melinda, I really respect the philanthropy that you've been doing with Bill's money, but I don't respect not walking your talk. She's like an ultra billionaire and hasn't even written a line of Windows code. She has billions of her own now. She can start like AI schools and courses for women maybe. Or start companies. She has all the resources. This reminds me of like your family is maybe chilling in the living room and you go there and you say like, you know, someone should take out the trash. Well, why don't you do it then? Look, I agree actually. I'm all for more women in AI. It's kind of boring here without you girls, honestly. But what can we do? Listen to this. I just checked the analytics of my channel. 95% of the viewers are men. Are you kidding me? Ladies, come on. We need you here. Don't let AI be a boys only club. Otherwise, in a few years, ChatGPT will mansplain everything through the use of fart jokes and bro code and will constantly try to one-up you and ask you to introduce it to your female friends. So, another eventful day in AI. Good stuff, bad stuff, and everything in between. And that's the way it is. That was the AI report. Hope you're learning a ton here. Like and subscribe to earn some good karma points for your next incarnation. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>